Are we finally starting to see some relief in rent prices? It's kind of looking like it. Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we go over all things Arizona real estate and just keep looking and trying to figure out what's going on. The big question is, Rick, can you tell me what's going on with rent? Well, it's kind of hard because um, most rentals don't make it to the multiple listing service. So the data that they get is uh, um, it, it follows the same trend, but the numbers aren't always the same, if that makes sense. I'll show you a couple examples here in a moment. And that is that when the rental market was really hot, and it's still pretty hot, uh, there was no need to put a rental on the multiple listing service. Most people just put them on Zillow. Or they just told their neighbor, hey, my place is for rent. Because you could, you could get somebody in there quite easily. If we take a look at the history of our rental prices here, you can see even when things collapsed down here in 2008, um, we didn't see a huge decrease in rent prices. In fact, they started to go up. They finally creeped down around 2010. And that's because the flippers who came in and remodeled the homes that were foreclosed on, those started hitting the market quite aggressively down here in this, in this dip. So you had more supply and you had all these people that foreclosed on their homes that had to find a place to live. Um, so once those came on the market, rent prices went down. And then the party was over starting at about 2015. <clears throat> Rent prices continue to go up, up, and up. And now, rent prices are coming down. So what's going on? Well, according to Cromford and some of the data that they have here, we're seeing that single-family detached listings are up 128%. So they're saying the number of um, rentals, not, not counting short-term rentals like Airbnbs, are up over 4,000 for the first time since January 2015. Now, let me clarify something on that for just a moment, because we're up at 4,000 units in the Phoenix market. But then you go to apartments or rent.com, and I'm showing over 5,587 properties. Chances are the majority of those are not on the multiple listing service and their apartments, because the apartments, they don't list on the MLS. So, there's, so you're looking at about 10,000 rentals that are floating around out there at least. And as you cruise through here, um, you know, we're, we're seeing rent prices on average here have gone from a peak of $1.40 a square foot to $1.33. Well, 1,000 square foot apartment, that's $1,400. Now it's $1,330. So you're not seeing that much relief. You're seeing some. You're seeing uh, rent prices starting to turn and come down. And uh, the reasons are that single-family detached homes are up 128% on the MLS. Townhomes up 122. Apartments are up 99%. And patio homes up 75%. And it also says with interest rates in the mid to high sixes, the case for purchase over renting is weaker now than it's been for a very long time, which exasperates the demand problem for homes for sale are facing. In other words... It's now cheaper to rent than it is to buy. And uh, that's making it tougher for um, landlords uh, to get the price that they want. And I do, uh, there was a subscriber here uh, this week that sent me a note and said, hey, guess what? My landlord came to me and wanted a 25% rental increase. And he said, I showed him the numbers and said, uh, no, we, we can't do this. Uh, there's There's not that much demand for rentals right now. And he laid out a pretty compelling case and the landlord goes, well, you're right. <laughs> so be armed with information. And uh, he actually showed him that that the market is not as strong as you think. And some of these landlords do operate in a bubble. If they only own like one or two places, they're not looking at vacancy rates. They're just looking at what the neighbor got down the street. Now the big apartment complexes and stuff, they do. And what I'm seeing here is they're still hiring a kite. Um, here's 56th Street, $1,500 plus. That's $1,500 is probably starting with a one bedroom. What I found was funny looking at this site here is there, it says deals, special offer. Well, that's like a fly going to a light bulb. So I clicked on it 
And I said, well, I wonder what the deal is. So I click on the special offer and it just says, uh, hot deals, luxury apartments starting in the 1800s on select units. Contact our leasing office for more details. Every deal that I clicked on said, call the office. So they don't really tell you what's going on, but they're saying that they're starting at 1800. That's that's way up there, and that's pretty typical of what we're seeing out here in the market. Now, single-family homes that are independently owned, um, I'm going to figure that those rents are going to start coming down as we get into 2023. Not dramatically, because there are still people moving here. Now, we are facing some headwinds. Uh, we're seeing some layoffs coming. Um, this is what the central bank wants. Uh, they need to create a little bit of strife out there for us, and... Uh, People are going to lose their jobs, and that will affect rent. I uh, don't know where they're going to go, and I don't know how big that problem is going to be. We've had recessions before where layoffs have been minimal. And again, it depends on the sector. Right now, the chip market is, is feeling some stress. That's why Intel down in Chandler's announced it's going to have some layoffs. The Taiwan chip uh, place up in North Phoenix is still being built. Um, so that construction is continuing. They haven't, you know, shut that one down. So a lot of employment going on up there and a lot of demand for rentals, just especially for construction workers. So um, retail's taken a major hit and that is uh, going to affect rentals. What isn't taking a hit is travel. And uh, we're back up to 2019 travel numbers coming in and out of Phoenix Sky Harbor, right? This weekend uh, over Thanksgiving. And that bodes well for our tourism industry and actually makes short-term rentals still attractive. Even though we have a pretty big glut of short-term rentals, I think they're going to ride it out through spring training. There's nothing that says that spring training is going to be a dud this year. Definitely hanging on to them for the Super Bowl, which I think is the first week of February, second week of February. So they're not going to dump them after the Super Bowl. They're going to stay and ride that wave of spring training here. So if we get short-term rentals start to hit the market, um, that's going to be in the summertime if they're having problems with bookings. And yet, that's a challenge for them, too. Are they going to list them and sell them if they have to? Or are they going to turn them into long-term rentals? They're probably going to sell them. Because if you're starting to see the long-term rentals numbers grow, like on the MLS, there's 4,000 now. They're probably, well, let, let's go ahead and just sell it and get what equity we can out of it. Um, and that's just speculation. There may be nothing happening in the short-term rental market. The regulations that are out there now are not stifling enough to make every, anybody get out of the business. They're just saying, hey, we just need to know how to get a hold of you in case there's a problem inside the house or the condo. If the party's too loud, we need to know who to call. And you have to get a permit. And the permits are not that expensive. They're like... They're averaging about 250 bucks a year to get a permit, and they have to pay a transaction privilege tax. But that has been there uh, for, the, for the longest time anyway on short-term and long-term rentals. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of clamping down. I'm seeing some regulation starting, uh, but there's a limit as to what they can do. So as we go forward and we look at the average rent here again in the valley, and we see it start to come down, pretty long journey down before you really can say, that you're feeling some relief. Um, this is to get down to areas like here where you would probably feel pretty good about your rental price. That's a tall order to go from here to here. Um, so we will watch it. It's going to, we're not seeing all the completions done yet. You just drive around Gilbert and Tempe. You get down by uh, the university down there in Tempe and look at the number of places that are being built, especially on Apache, um, <clears throat> those aren't done yet. So that's going to add more square feet to the rental market. And along with that, that'll help bring prices down. But it's going to take something pretty radical to make them spike down. And so we're watching it. It's trending the right way. That's a good thing. Home prices right now, however, for sale are just sitting there. And that's to be expected as we get November into December that everything's just going to grind to a halt. Sales are going to continue to creep down. They're still at 2,200, 2,300. New listings are down so low that, you know how I track the seven-day moving average and I show that um, the number of new listings coming on and the number going under contract, the number going under contract went up just a little bit. And that's a seasonal thing. They kind of tend to 
grab a few things um, in November before Thanksgiving and then put on the brakes. But uh, I track what percentage is actually going under contract. If 3,000 new listings coming on and 2,300 going under contract, that's 80% of them are going under contract. So we popped up to 83% over the past seven days. It's not a trend. It's just something that's going on in the short term as we get ready to shut things down. This little yellow line here that shows that number of homes going under contract went up just a tiny bit is going to turn starting this week. And it's going to go down, 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 probably down to about 1900 the closer we get to Christmas. So that's what's going on in the Arizona real estate market. Do me a favor. Smash that like button. Have a great holiday weekend. Take care.